Are you a yellow-bellied guy? Are you, are you cowardice? Are you uh, writing about yourself? Are you writing about humanity in that sort of a song? I think in some ways myself, I, I, I think that 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 stuff exists in everyone, um, but it's it's kind of a challenge not to to land there, to to move out of that, to lead and love uh, your family well. But I mean, in a broad sense, that song is just saying, don't don't be a coward. Like, step up and and lead and love. Um, yeah. Kind of more of a, a wake-up call than, than anything. Are we cowards because we're afraid to risk something? I think we're afraid of all sorts of things that we're usually not even aware of. Uh, I mean, that's pretty pretty complex issue. I mean, why are people, why are people abusive physically, verbally, sexually? Like, that's a gigantic uh, question. I think their fear is kind of at the, at the roots of all those things. Um, yeah, I, I took a little bit from uh, from it, uh, thinking that people live fairly apathetically, too, a little bit. I think I, I mean I think that can be just well, I wouldn't say just as abusive, but it can also be abusive to to be apathetic. You know, mm -hmm. if you're in a position or a, a role or a relationship that requires certain things to uh, you know, so as a father, or as a, a husband, there are certain things that that come with that or should come with that, that if you're just apathetic to, that's very detrimental. But how, how does one stay away from that? Because you know when the water sort of gets lukewarm and everything sort of feels good, right? uh, man, I don't need to do any more right now. Um, man, man, that's a bad spot. That's when, I don't know, that's, a, that's when you, I think, open up situations that are, you're setting up like future failures kind of or um, I don't know I mean for me I think a, any kind of relationship doesn't really grow unless you're actively building into it and, and nurturing it uh, if you kind of let it alone it's like the weeds creep in and mm -hmm. um, you know th things I guess there's there's somewhat of a uh, Law of entropy operating in, in relationship even. So, uh, yeah. so do you have to kick yourself in the butt to to watch yourself from falling into it? Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, I, 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 for me, it's one of my harder things is I'm not very organized. And so that ends up leading to um, failing to follow through on things or... Um, and yeah, so I think there's a ton of different ways that that this stuff can manifest. But um, for me, that's that's one of my my harder things is is just staying on top of stuff that I'm saying I'm going to do or take care of. Um, yeah. But dude, if you have an iPhone, shouldn't you be able to do it all now? I try, I try. <laughs> I I would be actually really lost without it. I I wouldn't get anything done. So. <laughs> well, I guess you were born at the right time then, right? Yeah. You could have technology at your uh, fingertips, so. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe a different time I would have been trained better. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, I wonder that too. I wonder if if technology is has sort of led us to this place of, okay, I'll just have a little whistle that'll remind me twenty minutes before I have to do things. So then you don't even prepare for. Yeah, we also have much more complex lives. I think in a yeah. lot of ways, yeah, just so. the the myriad of communication forms really uh, kind of flood into our our lives uh, and also just all the diversionary things that are around now so yeah uh, I jump to the next track promises I I love the idea about commitment is this about commitment is it about divorce yeah. uh, it's about marriage divorce commitment um, essentially saying what's the point of making a mockery of of marriage you know we we do that because we all w want this thing usually and we there's these kind of classic vows in place and we all say those and uh they're really meaningless if we don't uh take seriously what they're talking about so all, all of those vows are you know talking about till death to us par for better or worse richer or poorer sickness and health um so it's like kind of a, a covenantal language of saying like I'm going to love you through those things not I'm always going to feel the same way but I'm going to actively 
love and care for you through those things. Um, but what happens in reality is people hit a rough spot and they're like, oh, well, I guess this person's not my soulmate. Mm -hmm. And so I'm out of here. Uh, and it's just, so it, it's trying to expose, I think, that situation. Like, what's the point of these promises if, if they don't mean anything? Um, it's kind of a, a, the other side of the coin from the weight or something where that's talking about what that, that mm -hmm. kind of love can look like. And this is kind of lamenting the lack of it. Is commitment, is it a practice? Is it an art? I mean, the commitment itself, I think, is one part of something larger. In a, in a committed, like, I mean, for me, I would say in a, like a marriage relationship, commitment is, is foundational to it. Um, the feeling of love is not really foundational to it it can lead to that commitment mm -hmm. okay but it doesn't sustain that commitment if you if you let that be the sustaining of that commitment then that commitment is only as you know that commitment can go out the window if you wake up grumpy you know like that's that's not what it is about so a feeling of love can lead into that commitment and then that commitment can keep rebirthing feelings of love throughout that relationship uh especially when both parties are mutually committed in that way. Um, and so there's, in a sense, a, a deepening of those feelings. It's less kind of surface, whatever, but um, I don't know. I, so I think that's a, a large misconception is what, mm. what sustains a marriage, what sustains a relationship. It's not, it's not feelings, like feelings are fleeting. So does this ring on my finger and that tattoo on your finger, what does that symbolize? Um, I mean, I think it's supposed to symbolize a, that commitment that's mm -hmm. saying this is, this is a done deal. This is what I'm, I'm committing to. I'm, you know, off the market to anyone else. I'm off I'm, the market. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like th right, this yeah. is, I'm, I'm not screwing around with this. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a physical uh, reminder of, of, of that commitment. Yeah. I think I still look at people's, uh, hands. I don't think often, but often enough that I, that I'm thinking about it right now to go, I wonder if they're, and not that I'm, not that I'm on the market, not that I'm looking, but I'm just thinking, I wonder how, what their life is like. Oh, they're in a relationship and that's, and I always kind of go, Oh, that's cool. Mm. You know, because I think that hopefully it's a it's a healthy healthy thing that's going. The other thing I was thinking that you were talking about was um, that you were uh, going to was before I got married to my wife, she really wanted to have this beautiful ceremony, and we ended up having that, and it was great. But at the time, I'm like, I am already committed to you. So what what is the difference between my commitment in love uh, to her rather than actually having a public service um, th for it? I think that you're. Part of it is that you're, I mean, you're making vows, promises, mm -hmm. oaths, whatever you want to call it, in front of you know your community. You're saying this is what I'm committing to, so that they they also are are holding you to that. Right. They they know that it's not some some secret thing, and and there's a sense of the the celebration of it, you know, in that. So the, I think it's a combination of uh, accountability in a sense, and also having other people join in, being like, this is awesome that you're doing this. Mm. Hey, I love the lyrics on this record. I just think they're, I don't know, this and beggars, I just think you're at the top of your game, and maybe in 10 years I'll, I'll say something <laughs> else about whatever the new lyrics are then, right? Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I work really hard on them, so it's, it's always uh, it's cool to hear when people are stoked on them and feel like they're the best things I've done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course, we always want to get better at everything, right? Yeah. But that's what it is. <laughs> Uh, blinded. I, I, I don't. Maybe my fave song on. The, maybe sonically my fave song on the record. But I also love the idea of of when somebody's trying to fake life, and, and specifically in the lyrics, I go to keep a close watch on the whitewash, disguising the dead bones inside. Is that is that song kind of going down that road? Yeah. Um, for me, it's it's really talking a lot about. Uh, I don't know, distinctions between a legalistic looking at, at your actions and a, and a heart focused, uh, look at yourself. Um, uh, so Jesus is, uh, it, a lot of it's taken imagery from, 
from Jesus talking uh, to the Pharisees, and they were kind of a, a religious group within Judaism at the time, and they kept all these laws very well on the outside. They even made more laws on top of what God had given them to make sure they didn't break the other ones, and and uh, so they were just really anal about all this. And uh, he basically he he said <laughs> he's really mad at them, and he, he calls them a bunch of things. He says he calls them whitewashed tombs, disguising dead bones, and. Mm basically saying like you look real nice on the outside but inside in your heart there's rottenness um and so i i think um that's something that a lot of people can can struggle with i definitely know i have at times and and um with just trying to appear a certain way but but inside not uh not having those actions actually connected to to my heart